Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Speaker, to the gentleman from Texas for yielding some time for me today. And as I rise in support of this legislation that will put to a full stop my own state of New York from banning affordable, reliable gas-powered vehicles. Now, last year, Governor Kathy Hochul announced that New York State, not to be outdone by Democrats in California, would move forward with a ban on the sale of new gas-powered vehicles by 2035. Mr. Speaker, this asinine approach is only the latest in a long list of actions taken by the Biden administration and by Democrats in my own state to foist new bans, regulations, and costs onto the backs of hardworking middle-class Americans. My colleagues on the other side of the aisle, they want the American people to believe that ditching our internal combustion engines for battery-powered cars, that's a silver bullet to a greener, cleaner future. But my constituents in upstate New York, in rural upstate New York, are facing energy costs that are 30% higher than previous years. And those costs are projected only to increase further and further. Rural towns and communities in western New York and the southern tier along the Pennsylvania border, they cannot survive on transportation that is solely battery powered, given the long distances driven charger accessibility and lack of reliability that comes with the current crop of EVs. Now, last week, President Biden's own energy secretary, Granholm, she put on a master's class on the issues rural Americans will face, from failing to find working charging stations to long wait times. Her EV road trip was a total disaster. It was like an episode of Veep, and we cannot make this a reality for everyday Americans. Not only is it costly, not only is it impractical, but our electric grids are not capable of handling this added burden. The latest reports by New York's own independent service operators show that New York State's electrical grid is strained in approaching a breaking point as Governor Hochul and Democrats in Albany ban everything connected to fossil fuels, from stoves to cars to natural gas hookups in buildings and private homes. It's very simple, folks. Banning gas vehicles forces New Yorkers and Californians and one day all Americans, if we keep going down this path, to live in an energy future that is less affordable, less safe, and more dependent than ever on our most dangerous adversary, China. I strongly support this underlying legislation today and this rule as a step towards ensuring America does not follow the lead of the radical left in California, in New York. Let's put a stop to these nonsensical bans. This is serious news. There are currently four major social security shakeups that may begin to affect your finances after the 2024 election. This includes changes to how much monthly benefits will be worth and who will remain eligible for these benefits. Many have already shown support for a new modern version of social security. My dear friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video to hear about all of the details. Also, every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, simply click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. According to the latest trustee reports for the Social Security and Medicare trust funds, Social Security's trust funds could run empty by the year 2034, unless Congress takes action to shore up the program's finances. While Democrats and Republicans vow to protect benefits, experts say we need to address these problems now. Tax Foundation economists Alex Durante said to CNBC News, the longer we push this out, it becomes more difficult to try to protect everyone that receives the benefits. It is important that we tackle this sooner rather than later. One suggestion has been to raise the retirement age to 70 from 66 to 67 years old. Advocates for raising the retirement age say that people in the United States live longer but this is not necessarily true for the bottom half of earners. Raising the retirement age would also cut benefits for all new retirees, disproportionately harming lower and middle income beneficiaries. The Center on Budget and Policy Priorities has said 
that another possibility is to raise the income cap to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or more, or completely eliminate it. Currently, those earning over the cap pay a Social Security payroll tax rate of one percent or less. Those under the cap pay up to six times more. So, increasing the payroll tax rate from twelve point four percent to fifteen point six percent is another common suggestion. But former Cranston, Rhode Island Mayor Steve Laffey plans to enter the presidential race with his own plan. CNBC News has reported that instead of tax increases or benefit cuts, Steve Laffey wants to gradually phase out the FICA tax completely. Workers and employers each pay 6.2 percent on up to $160,000 in wages towards Social Security. This would be replaced by new personal security system accounts, where workers would contribute 10 percent of their pay. These funds would be invested into a weighted index of global stocks, bonds, and other securities. This would also provide beneficiaries a bigger return on their investment, and aim to address the program's current inequities. The government would make matching contributions for lower earners, the disabled, and the unemployed. Laffey says that a 20-year-old worker in 2025 may eventually receive $10,000 per month rather than $2,000. So, dear friends, what are your thoughts about the personal security system account? Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. The SSA is also currently working on overpayments. The SSA has a balance of more than $20 billion in overpayments. A spokesperson said, "The agency is required by law to recover the overpayments." The SSA said in a recent statement, "Our payment accuracy rate are high. Even small error rates add up to substantial improper payment amounts." During testimony before a congressional committee, the Social Security Administration acting commissioner said, "Over one million people were sent overpayment notices." In the 2022 fiscal year, and approximately 980,000 in fiscal 2023, some of the people who received overpayments owe tens of thousands of dollars. Some overpayments happen because a recipient's income is more than what is allowed, or because their living situation or marital status changed, and this is according to the SSA. Overpayments can happen. Because a supplemental security income recipient has more resources than the allowable limit, in some overpayment cases, people who are no longer considered disabled continue to receive benefits. The benefits miscalculation can also happen because the SSA determines someone's benefits using incorrect or incomplete information. A recent government scorecard. For one social security program, found hundreds of millions in supplemental security income overpayments last year were within agency control. Well, my awesome and amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. Dearish friends, thank you very much for being part of this community. To say thank you and to show my appreciation. Every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway, friends, please click and like several of my videos, and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, dearish friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Thank you, friends, and have a wonderful and very blessed week.